Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn how we can apply caching in Python programs. So let's get started. So first of all, let us try to get a brief overview of what caching really is. So let's assume that in your computer you have two programs, program 1 and program 2. The program 1 is responsible for taking any input and doing some heavy computation over that and returning a result. Okay, And your program 2 is actually calling the program 1 very frequently um, and for, for the same input a lot of times. So what happens is that um, a better solution here is that you can simply store the result um, for some very frequently um, called inputs to your program 1 in some memory area. So what happens is that whenever your program 2 calls program 1 with the same input you will find that result in your memory area and simply return that result. So in this way you are um, saved from doing that heavy computation for that particular input again and again. Right. So this is all um, caching is all about. So basically caching helps you to store the data so that the future request for that particular data can be served faster. Okay. So this is the concept of caching and let's come to a very popular caching algorithm which is LRU or least recently used. So let's come back to our case of program 1 and program 2 um, and also now we have a caching memory area. Okay, so in this area we store any result that we want to save for um, faster retrieval. So now let's say our program 1 is called with some input A. So what we do is that we compute our result for input A and save that result in the caching memory area as well and return that result to um, the calling function as well. Okay, now um, if the calling function again calls my program 1 with input A what I will do is I will not do that computation again I will simply find that I have the result for input A in my cache already and I will simply return that result okay so that is the main caching job happening here but now um, if I get the call with input B what will I do I do not have that already then I will simply calculate my result for input B and return that result and also save that result in my caching area and the same goes with C but now if you notice our caching memory area is full there is no space for any new result so let's say in next case if I get the call to my program 1 with input D what I will have to do is I will have to remove um, any one result out of the existing ones so now here um, the concept of LRU comes which data block to remove from the caching memory area and the concept is that you remove that data block which has been least recently used and in our case let's say A has been least recently used so what we will do is we will simply remove A and replace its place with the new result like D. So what we are assuming is that the particular data block which, are, which was least recently used has the lowest possibility of being called by the calling function again. So that is the concept and let's say if um, I get a call to my program 1 with the input A again what will I have to do is I will have to now again remove the least recently used um, result from my caching memory and in that case in this case it will be B I will just remove that and put A here again okay so this is how least recently used caching works and now let's come to our Python code like how we are going to, going to apply caching but before that let's try to see a particular function where we may need caching right so let's say I have a Fibonacci um, so I have to generate a Fibonacci series for which I am just creating a function which is capable of returning the nth Fibonacci number. So it just takes input as n. If n is 0 which means if we are trying to find the 0th which means the first Fibonacci number or the second Fibonacci number then what we return is we return 1 because that is actually 1 else we just go with the sequence uh, which is fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2. So basically in a Fibonacci series um, the value of any nth Fibonacci number is equal to the sum of the um, n minus 1th and the n minus 2th Fibonacci number. So that's it. So now if I just try to find fib uh, 1 it's 1, fib 2 it's 2 and fib 3 it's 3 because 1 plus 2 is 3 okay so now let me just print the Fibonacci series here 
fib x for x in range let's say 10 so let me just print first 10 Fibonacci numbers so look at that this is my series 1 1 2 3 5 8 and so on so look at that 3 plus 5 is 8 5 plus 8 is 13 8 plus 13 is 21 okay so now um, a very important thing to understand here is that we are calling the Fibonacci num the Fibonacci function with the same input again and again while we are trying to print this series because when I am trying to find um, Fib 3 I am calling Fib 1 and Fib 2 and now for calculating Fib 2 I am calling Fib 0 and Fib 1 so in this way I am calling Fib 1 two times so like that so here the function Fib is being called for the same input many number of times so what we can do here is we can apply caching so that we are able to save the result for any particular given input so that the result can be used directly without calculating it again right so that is the thing um, so first of all let's see how slow our program can get so I'm just importing the time module and now I'm just gonna calculate t1 is equal to time dot time and let's say t2 is equal to time dot time okay and I'm just gonna try to print first let's say 35 Fibonacci numbers okay so look at that it's taking some time um, let's wait for it it's gonna take around 10 to 15 seconds I think right so as we are going to call the same function again and again a lot of function calls are being made recursively this takes a lot of time and if you try to check it took just over 15 seconds right that's a lot of time for a very simple function and now um, what we can do now is that we can apply um, caching over here okay so for, for doing that we have an inbuilt module called um, func tools which has a function called lru cache So this function implements the LRU caching algorithm for you. So you have to just simply use it like a decorator in which uh, it's actually a parameterized decorator which takes an argument called max size. So this is basically um, so what happens here actually is that LRU cache function will simply um, store uh, will create a dictionary which will store um, the inputs to your function as keys and the output of that function call as your values for that for those keys so the maximum number of keys that dictionary can contain is actually the max size so basically the results of maximum number of calls that your um, caching memory can store is your max size here so let's say it's 16 right now okay and yeah so I've just created, uh, I've just defined that I'm going to use um, LRU caching for this particular function. And now let me just run it. Okay, look at that. It didn't take even a second, right? T2 minus T1. Look at that. It's taking even less than one millisecond. Isn't that amazing? Right? And let me just increase this time now. Let me make it 70. Um, so that should increase the time because we are just going to calculate something more. But look at that, it didn't take much time there again. It's taking four, 0 0.4 milliseconds, right? So this is the power of caching that you can, that you are um, using here. Because a lot of duplicate calls to your function are being made and you're just storing them in a dictionary. So you are just getting them very fast without calculating it again and again. So that's, this is how we are using caching here. And also, um, if we want to find out how our caching algorithm is working um, we can do fib dot cache info so look at that I get the number of hits and the number of misses so basically a hit is uh, when um, I try to find uh, a particular input in my cache memory area and I find it so that I can simply use its result directly we call that a hit but if we got an input and the output for that particular input is not being stored in our memory area we call it a miss and in that case we will have to compute um, the output for that particular input for our function again okay so that is a miss so right now we got 202 hits and 105 misses in our um, 
in in our call to uh, print this particular series okay so this is how it works and i hope the concept of applying caching over python functions is clear and if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching